Today we're checking out this 2022 Vanderhall Venice. Without any further ado, I'm not going to waste any time. Let's go ahead and get straight on with the review of this car. To begin the review, let's go ahead and start with a little bit of some performance numbers. Now, this car is powered by a 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder, producing 195 horsepower and 185 pound feet of torque. And with that 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder, you can expect a zero to 60 time of 4.5 seconds, which is absolutely insane for a car this size. I can't even imagine how scary that would be. And this car has a top speed of 130 miles an hour, which is, seems rather scary. I'd be terrified to death driving it that fast. Let's go and start talking about dimensions of this car. Now, this car has a length of 143 inches, which makes it just a little bit longer than a Smart 4.2. This car has a width of 44 inches and also has a height of 66 inches. And I must say, this, that makes this car very, very small, but it also means it's going to be very, very light. This car has a weight of 1,450 pounds. So 198 horsepower may not sound like a lot, but whenever you have, a little, whenever you have weight, uh, 1450 you know this car is going to be very very fast now let's go ahead and start talking about wheels of this car now this car is obviously a three-wheeler it's kind of obvious and the crazy thing about this car this car is actually not classified as a car here in america this car is actually really considered an auto cycle which is kind of interesting it's kind of like what the polaris slingshot is also kind of like it's also like it's also classified as a auto cycle and I must say, it's kind of interesting to see because see, this thing has three wheels, which is kind of, which is kind of an inter interesting fact. Thinking about the wheels, this car has 18-inch wheels up front and also 18-inch wheels up back, and they're wrapped right in 225 by 40 ZR18 tires. And those tires really do do a good job with the grip and keeping the all the tires together, which is kind of interesting. Let's go ahead and start with exterior styling quirks, starting with badging. Now. Of course, you got the Vanderhall logo on the side, as well as the Venice logo on the side, which it looks kind of interesting. And then you also got the Venice logo right behind the gas cap and actually right in front of the rear wheel, which it looks pretty good. However, there is no Vanderhall logo on the front of the car. It's all you got is the all you got is the grill and the headlights, which they do still look really cool up there. And you also got you also got Vanderhall Motorworks on the rims as well. And speaking of and those rims, with that Vanderhall logo on the on the rims, this looks absolutely incredible and that pretty much sums up badging now let's go ahead and start talking about cool exterior styling quirks and stuff like that now you do have roll bars these roll bars are made our federal regulation because since this car technically is a convertible so what this is supposed to help you for is like if this as if the car is going to be on a rollover this is this here is used to prevent your head from getting crushed which is kind of an interesting thing if it did not have these the roll cage would be your skull here's probably the most interesting thing about the vanderhoff and it's the mirrors now the mirrors, they're not, they're not power operated. There's no way you can power operate these mirrors. They're only adjusted manually. And as you can see, as I move these around, this is here's how you adjust these mirrors. It's just like, I mean, yeah, I mean, this is, this is a little bit of a gimmick, but it does still seem pretty cool. It brings a little bit more class, a classic into the interior. It makes the car seem a little bit more like futuristic and also classic at the exact same time. And this is why I absolutely love this idea. It's really cool to see. And this car, it has, it does have one really cool thing about it. This car is kind of like a Dodge Viper a little bit it has there's like there's no there's no exhaust pipes on the back of this car instead the exhaust pipes are on the side of the car which is kind of interesting to see speaking of the exhaust this car does sound pretty good take a listen And so now that's pretty much all of the exterior quirks of the Vanderhall Venice. Now for the fun part, now we got to actually get inside and check out some of the cool interior stuff. Now, getting inside of this car is not, it's not as hard as most people may make it seem like. So you want to first step, start by putting your primary foot in, sit on this, you can sit on this pillar right here and you can just slide yourself right in. And once you get inside here, it is actually pretty comfortable. You have plenty of room. Now, if you were going to ride with a passenger, you probably would be shoulder to shoulder because these seats are very, very close together. But it's still not that big of a deal. And also these seats, they just feel absolutely incredible. They're leather and they have these little grips on them, which are designed to really hold you in place. And they feel really, really good. I absolutely love these seats of this car. So now, once you get done, you know, like once you get inside of this car and you take it out for a joy ride and you have a lot of fun in it, then it's time to get out of the car. It's kind of it's, it's kind of like a similar process to get out. So we start by putting your left foot out 
and then you simply slide and ride on out, and there you go. Then you're out of the Vanderhall Venice. So now we move on to the inside of the Vanderhall Venice. So now this car's interior is not as quirky as it may sound, because see this car does not have a center screen, so it is not so it doesn't have all this crazy high technology inside of this car. But anyway, the first thing you notice whenever you first get inside of this car is this absolutely incredible steering wheels, all classic. Now this steering wheel design is not the only one that they option or they have for this car. You can also get a black leather one, but the owner of this car decided to get this incredible looking wood steering wheel and it feels absolutely incredible. And that's not the only thing that's in the inside of this car as well on the steering wheel as well. Of course you also got the Vanderhall logo on one of the spokes. And then you also got the Venice logo which is where the horn is. And in case you want to know what the horn of the Vanderhall Venice sounds like, well... And now it's going to start talking about buckling the seat belts. Now, if you guys may notice, there is no the seat belts are not located to the left, to your over your left shoulder, or if you're a passenger over your right shoulder. Instead, this car is just like a Lamborghini Murcielago. You actually find the uh, seat belts in the middle of the car, and then you buckle them just like you would any other seat belt. Of course, you just pull them over. There's a little latch to the left side of you, and the, that's when you can use the belt to buckle your seat belts. It's like any other seatbelt, they're just located in a different spot. It's kind of weird, and I'm pretty sure getting inside of this car for the very first time, it would be a little bit to get used to, but it's kind of interesting to see. Now, if you actually look over to the left side of the driver, and it's on top of this pillar that you sit in to get inside of the car, you will notice there's a, there's a little black panel over this. Now, this car is also optioned with a manual shifter. Now, this car does not have it, but this, and the, if you got the manual shifter one, there would be a little manual shifter right here, and there would be a mode on either the... Uh, here where the uh, climate control vents are you press this button right there and you can then actually access the manual mode and you can shift it up and of course you pull it down where it's the shift up uh, I think it's down yeah you push it up the upshift and then down the downshift and it's kind of interesting to see inside of the car like that and this car does also have heated seats however they're not located in the center control stack or anywhere it's kind of like where you would find any other normal ones it's all controlled by a lever to the left of the seat by this dial and once, whenever you turn it, a little red light turns on to let you know that the heated seat is on. And it does feel pretty cool. To actually mess around with and actually flick up and down, it's kind of addicting. It's kind of like you're toggling something inside of a fighter jet, and it's kind of cool to see. Of course, you also got your regular stocks, like you got your turn signal stocks, which work just like any other turn signal stock. You also got your headlight stock, which is kind of interesting to see. You can actually turn on, turn on and off the headlights, which is kind of interesting. And then you also got, let's go ahead and move into the center area, the center console, or the really the center control stack area. Now, the first thing you may notice is that there is no center screen in this area, because there is no center screen. Instead, so you got the Vanderhall logo right in the middle, and right underneath that, you got four, you got three different um, pulleys you can pull, then you also got, like, you also got five toggle switches. Now, the far left toggle switch, that controls the Bluetooth. The, the one right next to that one, that controls the cruise control, and the one here run in the very, very middle allows you to set the speed of the cruise control. And the, the far right one also actually lets you turn off traction control. And the far, the very, very far right one turns on and off the hazard lights, which is kind of interesting to see. And these buttons are really, really addicting to push. And you also got two climate control vents inside of this car. They're located right here in the middle. They're rather large. But these may look rather familiar because they're actually borrowed from the Chevy Camaro which is kind of interesting. You, you, you would use it just like you would any other climate controls out of the Camaro. That's one thing I really do like to see inside of this car, Camaro related items. And you guys know, I actually own a Chevy Camaro, not a new Camaro, but an old, but a older Chevy Camaro, but these are here used inside of the new Chevy Camaros. And it's kind of interesting to see inside of this car. Camaro climate control vents, that's kind of interesting. Now looking at the gauge cluster, as you can, as you can see, Look how classic these gauge clusters look. They look absolutely incredible. They're like, just, just to look at, it's kind of interesting. Of course, you got your speedometer in the far left, you also got your fuel gauge in the far right, and you also got your speedometer as well, which it does look pretty cool to see. And you also got a water gauge, or water temperature gauge, at the inside of the uh, tachometer as well, which is kind of interesting to see. Now, I can already imagine how fun this car would be to drive with the manual shifter. But I must say, I did drive it up to this location, and I must say, this car is an absolute blast to drive. I absolutely love it. And of course, on the far left of that, you also got your engine start stop button. You turn your presses button right here to turn it on, just like you're starting a fighter jet, which is kind of interesting to see. And you can always know the traction control is on as well, because see, as I flip up the switch, a red a light turns on in the gauge cluster or on the tachometer area to let you know the traction control is on. 
and also let you know about the ABS brakes and also just any other warning inside of this car as well. Which is kind of interesting to see inside of a car like this. You also got your little glove box. If this one here is locked, I'm not going to open that one. But I must say the interior of this car is not like it's all quick and it's also not all scattered around all in your face technology. It's all simple and stuff like that. It's kind of interesting to see. The gear lever is kind of interesting. Now the gear lever looks like a manual shifter, but instead of this car as an automatic transmission, it's a six-speed automatic transmission from the Chevrolet Equinox, and I must say it is pretty cool to see. And of course, I actually use this gear lever to push down on the gear lever, and then I'd use it. Then that's how that's how you would actually use to adjust the different gears, which is kind of interesting to see inside of this car. Now let's go ahead and start talking about temperature, like adjusting the temperature, fan speed, and stuff like that. Now the temperature is actually adjusted by this pulley right here. So now, of course, you pull this lever out. That gives you more heat, push it back in, less heat. Pull it out, more heat, pull it back, push it back in, less heat, which is kind of interesting to see. Now let's go ahead and start talking about the fan speed. Now, fan speed is adjusted by this pulley right here, but it said it's actually not a pulley. You twist it to actually adjust the fan speed of the car, which has a little fan on it as well. And there's it's a dial right here. This dial center dial right here is used to control all the Bluetooth options. Now the owner has never messed with this option, so I'm not going to mess with it. But here's what you would use to adjust all the different Bluetooth options inside of this car. Which, however, however, you probably will not be using Bluetooth inside of this car. Just take a look at these pedals as well. These pedals are all classic looking. They look really, really good. These kind of remind me of like an older AMC Javelin because I, you guys know, I've driven an AMC Javelin. That's what these kind of remind me of. These, these brakes also do lock as well, and they feel really, really good, especially whenever you're driving. I absolutely love these. And of course, you also got your parking brake, which works just like any other parking brake. And then finally, for the very last part of the review, if we can get it down before, before we get down to the drive, we're going to talk about how to adjust the seats. So now, there's only one seat adjustment, and that is to adjust the whole seat itself. It's on one big panel. You pull up on this on this bar right underneath, right right between your legs. And so here you pull it up and that's what you would use to actually adjust the seats of the Vanderhall Venice. And it's kind of cool to see and mess around with. And that's pretty much how you adjust the seats inside of the Vanderhall Venice. And so that's the 2022 Vanderhall Venice. Now, before I take this car out on the road, here's something interesting. You, yeah, you could have the opportunity to rent out this Vanderhall Venice. Now, because the owner of this car actually has this car listed on Turo that's available to be rented. I will leave a link in the description box down below to the to, to, to the Turo site where you could go rent out this Vanderhall Venice. And I'm telling you, you absolutely should. This car is definitely a once in a lifetime opportunity or like a once in a lifetime experience. It's one of a kind. You will not drive another car that's exactly like this. This car is, is a complete unique experience and I think everybody should have the opportunity to check this car out. Anyway guys, like I said, I will leave a link in the description box down below to the Turo site where you can go rent out this Vanderhall Venice. And so that's pretty much the Vanderhall Venice. Now before I go as well, we're going to talk about pricing. Now this car may look like it's something like in the $100,000, $120,000, $200,000 dollar range. That's actually not the case. The owner of the car told me he paid $35,000 for this car. 35k that's a complete steal for what you get it's one of the best cars i think i've ever reviewed in my life it's like a little mini roller coaster for the road if we to prove that i gotta get it out on the road so without any further ado let's go ahead and get the vanderhall venice out on the road to see how it drives i cannot tell you how many sleepless nights i've had waiting for this day all righty y'all driving the vanderhall venice this is getting me like extreme like this is absolutely incredible. I'll take off my microphone for obvious reasons because I do not want to, because I do not know if, if the microphone would even survive it. I have no idea. <laughs> but wow, so far this car is just absolutely insane. I gotta be careful though, I gotta turn my mic, gotta turn my phone calling out. I must say, this thing here is just an absolute dream to drive. Dark around corner. It is absolutely incredible. Exhaust as well is just absolutely incredible. Steering precision is so light. The steering almost feels disconnected. <laughs> Listen to that. It's absolutely insane. And you're so low to the ground. It's absolutely incredible. This is just absolutely crazy. This thing is absolutely nuts. 
it's a unique and one of a kind experience. It's not something you get to experience all that often. The brakes are extremely responsive.
And so, there y'all have it. Anyway guys, if you guys did enjoy, please make sure you guys go hit that subscribe button, turn on post notifications, and also go ahead and go drop a like on this video to support me and the channel. Also guys, go subscribe to all my other YouTube channels. They will all be linked in the description box down below, as well as my, all my social media. Anyway guys, thank you all so much for watching today's video. Peace out.